if somebody can only read one book Ooh. for their marketing, for, for enhancing marketing. their marketing business. For enhancing their marketing, probably Ultimate Sales Machine. Ultimate yeah. Sales Machine. Yeah, Contagious is a really great book. That one was really fun to read, but it, it, and it's really insightful to, to learn that virality methodology and, and formula, but Ultimate Sales Machine, there's just nothing more proven than that method. So just so everybody knows, Adrian has a very interesting backstory and we'll cover a little bit. This is not like a, a bio, but I think it's important that people know where you came from, kind of how your your agency developed and, you know, kind of just the whole backstory of how you started and got into the the biz. I ended up getting the honor of being able to help over 3000 people in two and a half years. So that was exciting. And then I got bought out. Uh, by a former boss of mine and thought I was going to continue to run the company, but had to learn some hard lessons. And then I was like, all right, well now what's next for me? So I decided to to go off to Chicago and learn from Google because they had classes going on out there. And that's when I learned the Google ads platform. And I had already brought in web developers and SEO guys. So I knew a lot about that stuff, kind of had stacked those skills already. And then I added the advertising on top of it. And that's where everything really started to shift for me once I was able to drive traffic and create really compelling messages and, and just learn about the traffic side. I thought, man, this is this is the future. This is where it's at. Well, and I know you, we actually talked about this on the podcast, but uh, could you kind of walk through how you uh, found the integrators? Because that's yeah. everybody wants an integrator because everybody, you know, most agency owners you talk to love strategy and it's yes. the fun part and connecting with the clients and building that relationship, which is actually what makes the money. Yep. Uh, but we do get roped into doing this and you found two integrators, which is incredible. Uh, how did you do that? Yeah, so at the very beginning, um, I had had a really close friend of mine who was in the mortgage industry and she she was working in the mortgage industry in the car business and I had known her and become really good friends with her and her husband and her husband was looking for work and he contacted me about coming to work for me and he was just not in a place in his mental health to really do the job and I got on the phone with her and I'm like, she's like, how's it going? And I'm like, not great, <laughs> not great. And she's like, I'm like, what I need is you, Amanda. And I just knew it was just something in my gut. I was like, what I need is you. I, she's not an extrovert. She's not outgoing. She's a freaking hard worker. I knew she busts her butt. I knew she was super smart. She had a lot of success in her career. And I'm like, I just, I had this gut feeling. So I listened to that gut feeling and I'm like, I need you. And so a couple of months later, she calls me back. She's like, I'm ready to leave the car business. She was like running one of their front desks in their service, service department. I'm like, I need you. So she jumped on board with me and I would call her on my way to my consulting gigs in the morning, I'd be like, Hey, I need this, 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 and this. And she's like, cool. She, I rattled, go down the whole list with her. And then she called me back two hours later. It's all done. Now what? And I'm like, Oh, uh, okay. Now I need this, 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 and this. She's like, okay, cool. That's done. Now what? And I'm like, Oh my gosh. So we just kept doing that day after day. And it started to compound and we started to see the results three, six, nine months down the road. And after about six months of that, I was like, all right, it's time for me to just focus just on the agency again. I'm not going to do the consulting, which was kind of silly, but I'm going to focus my attention away from the consulting and help continue to build this agency and focus on the vision of that. And we just started building. And then she, we got to the point where like I was doing some of the websites and we were kind of piecemealing some of the websites that we were doing. And I'm like, we need to go find another web designer. And so we went out and searched for a web designer. And that's when we found Chris, who was another introvert, highly technical, highly experienced in digital marketing, had his his uh, degree, went to college for it, like just new web design inside out and backwards and had done a lot of work with um, Jupiter themes, had developed all the Jupiter themes through uh, Elementor. And so I was like, this is exactly what we need. So we brought him on board and then he was just like, dude, I'm gonna come behind you. I'm gonna be, I just wanna make you look good in every way possible, everything that I can do, I got you. You're basically like the product, so we're gonna go out Amanda and I are going to go out and push you as hard as we can. And I'm like, sweet. Adrian, you know, in terms of uh, building the relationships between you and your your team. Mm -hmm. So I know that's that's a process. And, and you as a creator, <laughs> somebody's done everything. The tendency is always going to be to do everything yourself. And then, you know, and that gets very restrictive for the people you train because then they don't feel like they could take ownership right. of what they're building and, and blah, blah. Could you walk, walk through the process of how you kind of bring in somebody who's very capable and have them do what you need them to do, but also still give them the freedom to innovate. Yeah, I think I think the freedom to innovate, one of my my highest core values, just me as a person is freedom. Anytime there's restrictions and you try to put me in a box, I just, I wanna knock the box down. So I wanted to build a company that where people went to work with me, that it was a company that I wanted to work at. And so I, I don't micromanage people. I don't give them, um, you know, these, 
really harsh deadlines and any of that, like I have expectations. We use a project management system. Uh, Zoho runs our whole company, essentially our whole mm -hmm. agency is run on Zoho. And so we do put deadlines on the projects, but I'm not bugging them throughout the process going, hey, I, I expect uh, them to take accountability for themselves. And I hold them in account for their abilities, not their inabilities. And I think that's a really important part of uh, one of the lessons that I learned early on is like, they're going to look to me and I'm going to set the pace. I'm going to set the example. So I was working alongside them every day in my office. And so they were seeing how hard I was working and what I was pushing and where I was going. And there was just constant communication. I love that. There was constant communication between all of us. It was, there literally was a huddle every single day. Like to be honest, twice a week, we would pray together. I had a conference room at the front of my building and I would bring everybody into the conference room. We put on some some worship music and you know kind of low and we would just we would, somebody could be walking around the room however they felt they just what was best for them to pray and for them to spend time and even if they weren't the praying type just to have a moment of quiet and peace and just getting together as a team like that and just having a moment to to give our hearts and our minds to something that was bigger than ourselves uh, i think was a really big part of my culture and culture i think is something that a lot of creatives really struggle to build inside of their companies because they don't understand that culture is something you build daily weekly monthly quarterly yearly there's activities and things that you want to create within your company for just culture alone i had a mentor that taught me this he's like dude literally culture is like a pillar within your business he's like it's not just some like fancy thing that we talk about to try to like pump people up this is literally like hr culture is its own department within your business and you should have deliverables and things that you're doing on a regular basis so what are you doing now and i'm like uh, nothing, you know, Yelling. other than just being me, you know, I have my natural culture of who I am. So that was a really big deal for me to, to start to try to incorporate different factors into my business that, that created more culture, a positive culture of accountability, like, you know, working out like, Hey, we're going to stop here in an hour and all, all the guys, cause I have all guys here in this office with me <clears throat> and we're going to do 50 pushups real quick. And then in, at lunchtime, we're gonna do another 50 pushups. Just working together as a cohesive team all the time was a really big deal. And then just mm -hmm. using the systems that I had in place, Zoho, project management, Click, right? All these different things that Zoho offers, using those tools at their highest ability possible between sales, operations, finance, fulfillment, and marketing, right? And, and making it very cohesive across them, that was, that was a really big deal for me. So I think just using the right systems, being the right leader. If you're expecting people, like one of the things I learned from my mentor, Nicholas, Nicholas Bailey, is when we do these mastermind retreats and we're gonna go do the ice bath, who do you think mm. the first person to get in the ice bath is? Oh yeah, that's for you. No, it's him. Oh, it's him. Oh, okay, person. I was gonna say, like, put the leader. the leader in there first. He's the leader of the group. He's the one getting in there first. Who's the one that's going hardcore on the workouts harder than anybody else in the group? Him, right? He's setting the pace for every single person in the group in every area. You know, if there's another speaker that he brought into his event, he's just not sitting there just listening to the speaker going, oh, that's cool. He's like taking notes and he's like, cool, I got four pages of notes. How many pages of notes do you guys have? Right. And he's always setting the bar. And so that's just the way that I wanted to live and work and be is just no one's going to outwork me. No one's going to show up the way that I'm going to show up. And I want people, other people to see that. And that's going to be contagious. And, it, and it's really worked for me. Do you create packages of your work that you sell or is everything custom pros and cons of both everything is packages for me programs not even packages but programs mm. i have a program that i take people through that i've developed it's you have to develop your own method your own frameworks that you'll see all the influence i mean this is what digital marketers has done their entire business is built on frameworks right all the knowledge that they're sharing isn't they didn't come up with it it's how they packaged it. They created an incredibly influential brand. They package it up with their own methodologies. They put amazing people with amazing stories behind it. And they said, boom, here you go. And they drew people to it. They didn't have to push the rope. They pulled the rope. They led mm -hmm. everybody to them. And they did it by having their own methodologies. That applies to any business. And if you read The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes, education-based marketing is the most proven, unbeatable, game-changing marketing strategy you could possibly apply to any business, any brand. If you incorporate this into your clients, you're gonna find more success. You incorporate this in your own business, you're gonna find more success. I educate everybody on what I do. 
completely for free, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on stuff. I haven't held anything back from you guys. Not one thing. Mm -hmm. Stuff that there is even a few things that I said. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud right now. Because this is stuff like what I do, how I do my discovery calls. Like that stuff is my secret sauce. Those are the secrets like Russell Brunson talks about. Like that is stuff that I use, that I've used to make literally millions of dollars. But I give it away because what does that do? It builds the credibility. It builds the relationship with all of you. Hopefully Christina and I can do something together, right? It, it, it builds something that most people are afraid to go out and share and be vulnerable and, and give away the good stuff. But the good stuff is what's going to get other people traction. When you get other people traction, just like Alex Hermosi is doing right now, he's just giving it all away. Same thing that I'm doing. Just give it all away, educate the market, help, help rising tides raise all ships. I'm in the water too. We're all in this together. And so I think just having that team, that industry mentality of like, it's not just me versus you. We're not competitors. We're all working towards the same thing, the same goal. We want to make the world a better place. We want to live, live our best life. So that's just the way I look at life and the way I look at people and how I do business.